I really like working with groups. Seeing change happen collectively is great because I get to see people connect with and invest in each other. In individual therapy, time and again, I sit with clients weighed down with feelings of loneliness and isolation or with clients struggling with shame and thoughts of being the only one going through whatever it is they're going through. You know, having them participate in a group is a great way to have them open up and start challenging some of the beliefs that they have that keeps them in that loneliness and isolation. I like group therapy because it offers clients like these the opportunity to experience community and have a sense of belonging. It also challenges the negative self-talk and thinking, I'm the only one and no one really feels how I feel. People get hope in group because they find out that somebody else who's kind of had the experience have had positive movement and that helps them to feel more hopeful and encouraged. It's always wonderful to see someone who minimizes their experiences, don't think they have anything to add, find out how much of a change agent they really are in a group. And then they start speaking up a little bit more and they start sharing a little bit more. So it just creates a great sense of community and belonging for people. I make it a point to emphasize that when people come, even in the attendance of groups, because sometimes we don't feel like coming to groups. And one of the things that I give them to think about, your voice will be missing from the group tonight. And so someone may need to hear something that you have to say. Really impressing upon people that we don't just come to get, but we actually have something to give. I have value. I have worth just out of sharing what they've been going through and how they impact other people. One thing someone told me recently was, I thought we were going to start off really slow, but man, you got right at it, you know, and we kind of chuckled about it. The group is six weeks long and I want to make every second count. I do take the time to build a safe environment. I do stress the value of creating a safe and confidential place where people can really share. I try to advocate for ownership of the group by the group. Now, I try to practice not telling people what they need, but in this case, I'm going to say we all need to have good and healthy boundaries. Boundaries really do define who we are, separate and apart from who the other person is. I really love the thought that we're responsible responsible for ourselves and accountable to others. I'm responsible for keeping my house up well, but we live in a neighborhood and our neighborhood has value. So I'm responsible for my house, but I am responsible to you for the neighborhood. Part of that work is looking at where boundaries got violated, discovering boundaries, and then starting to separate out what is important to me Sometimes people go straight from my boundaries group right into codependency. They realize that they have some codependency behaviors that are impacting their lives. What I tell people about codependency is to think about it on a continuum. Everybody has a little bit of codependent tendencies. Those who especially can benefit from codependency are people who have lost a sense of their identity in an effort to be pleasing to others. People pleasing is probably the word that most describes codependency. If you're constantly walking on eggshells, stifling your own self-expression, lacking boundaries, when the other person is up, you're up, and when when the other person is down, you're down, you might want to look into codependency. I love groups and I really do enjoy seeing the light come on.